Um, so my name is uh, is Michael Muir. I'm currently a, a faculty member at the Rochester Institute of Technology here in Rochester, New York. Uh, and I'm going to be talking about how I got involved in ASF projects and how you might be able to as well, and how this is interesting from the perspective of uh, both people who are, are academics and people in industry and how we can work together in meaningful ways. Uh, I feel uh, a bit at this point like one of our uh, our keynotes from uh, from Edmund uh, this morning maybe uh, cannibalized a few things I was I was going to say, uh, and I'll, I'll mention some of the uh, the work that uh, that I've done with with Edmund and how he's been uh, been really helpful to uh, to some of the projects that we're working on. Uh, so I'm going to cover some uh, similar things to what uh, Edmund's doing, but you know what he was talking about this morning was uh, was great example of uh, of some of the things that uh, that I'll be discussing. All right, so I'm just going to start off just brief introduction to myself, um, how I got involved in the uh, in the ASF, uh, and then a little bit about the the Apache way and how that sort of connects with how we tend to uh, to operate as academics. Um, then I want to give a few examples of some some success stories of you know ASF and collaboration with academia, and finally ending with uh, how others can also get involved. Um, so first of all, my uh, my background, I uh, I started off uh, my education in uh, in 2009 with an undergraduate degree in computing science at what was uh, known as the University of Ontario Institute of Technology um, is now known as uh, Ontario Tech University. Uh, I did a master's degree in computer science at the University of Toronto. Uh, immediately after, I joined a, a startup called bunch which i'm going to assume no one has uh, has ever heard of uh which will you know lead you to understand how uh, how that turned out uh it was a really fun job you know working uh, a lot more hours than i would have liked getting paid a lot less than i than i would have liked but uh it was just a, a really uh, really great time there um and then we uh, took a, a leave from that to uh, start a phd in computer science at the university of, of waterloo um, a few years later, while I was a PhD student, I joined the uh, Apache Calcite project. Uh, and then a couple years later, I uh, graduated that PhD program. And as I mentioned earlier, now I'm at the uh, the Rochester Institute of Technology uh, and still working with ASF projects. So for me personally, the sorts of, uh, of things I work on and what uh, gets you up in the morning, uh, my research is the primary part of my job here. So my research is is focused around NoSQL database design and integration, uh, looking at connecting a bunch of, of different data sources, data in different formats, uh, doing distributed analysis of this data, including uh, you know interesting sources like open data, um, and also work with uh, with schema discovery uh, for semi-structured data. So this brings me to how how I ended up getting involved with uh, Apache and the uh, the ASF. Uh, so while I was my heterogeneous processing, seeing what existing research work there was, um, as well as what was out there that I might be able to leverage for my own uses, uh, and that's when I happened to come across the Apache Calcite project. Um, which is a data processing framework that operates over heterogeneous data sources. I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about Calcite in a moment. Uh, but I ended up contributing uh, an adapter for uh, Apache Cassandra to work with uh, Site, and also ended up uh, making some uh, some contributions to uh, to Apache Spark through all this. Uh, so Calcite, for those who aren't familiar with this specific project, um, it's a data management framework. Uh, does SQL query parsing and, and optimization and actually forms a lot of the, the basis for query optimization uh, in Apache Hive and Drill. Uh, we see it used by a lot of uh, different places in industry, Alibaba, Uber, and Tencent. Uh, we've got committers in the project from some of those organizations. 
Uh, and Calcite also connects to uh, a number of different data sources, including uh, a few other Apache projects such as uh, Cassandra and Spark. Uh, a little bit of the background on Calcite itself. Um, so Calcite was originally entering the incubator in 2014 as Optic, uh, was then renamed Calcite uh, a year later, first version of uh, Calcite non-beta uh, released, graduating from the incubator. Uh, the following year, I, I joined as a committer after my initial uh, contributions to, uh, to Calcite. Um, and then about a, a year later, I, I joined the uh, the PMC and started a term as the uh, the PMC chair. Uh, I say term because in the uh, in the Calcite project, we made the decision to have a new PMC chair um, every year. So that responsibility has been uh, been rotating around. Uh, but what was really interesting uh, for me and relevant to uh, to how I uh, engage with uh, with Calcite now uh, in 2018. Uh, some committers on the Apache Calcite project uh, published a, a paper uh, in ACM SIGMOD, which is a, a computer science database conference uh, that I'll get into uh, to more later. Uh, so I mentioned some of my uh, contributions before, you know, wrote this uh, adapter and some other uh, improvements to uh, Calcite, as well as uh, some minor improvements to uh, Apache Spark and some other uh, products I've worked on. Uh, and I really didn't know what to uh, expect when I was uh, first trying to uh, to contribute to uh, Apache Calcite. So this is a, a comment that I, I snagged from Jira uh, after I opened my uh, my first Jira case for the uh, the Cassandra adapter they implemented. Uh, and I also just wanted to to take a moment to uh, give uh, some thanks to uh, to Julian Hyde, who uh, is one of the uh, original creators of the uh, the Calcite project, and still uh, very heavily involved, uh, despite that uh, I believe not being uh, part of his uh, his day job anymore, working with with Calcite. Uh, and the response that uh, that I had from the uh, the community and, and engaging with uh, with people in the Calcite project uh, has just been. Uh, really great. I think for those uh, approaching from the outside into an ASF project, uh, I think generally you will likely find that those in the uh, in the project may be uh, a lot more uh, more welcoming and accepting of uh, of contributions than uh, than you might see elsewhere. Uh, that was certainly the uh, the case for uh, for me with uh, with Calcite. Um, within a few months of that uh, original uh, commit landing. Uh, I got the commit bit on uh, on Calcite, uh, and then uh, about a year after that, was uh, invited to uh, to join the PMC, uh, and still now have been uh, regularly uh, contributing to uh, to Calcite. So now here's uh, an important aspect of I think how those working with the uh, the ASF and those uh, in in academia can work together. I think. A lot of the uh, the same principles that underlie the ASF are also very well applicable to those in academia. Okay. So, I'm sure many uh, many of you here are familiar with the uh, the Apache way. I am going to uh, to go through some of the uh, the key tenets of the uh, of the Apache way, um, and then just do some comparing and contrasting for how we tend to uh, to work as uh, as as academics so give uh, a few points on uh, on each of these relevant to the ASF and then also how uh, I find they're they're particularly relevant to me in academia and how uh, Apache and academia tend to uh, to share a lot of the the same values so one of the the first uh, tenets of the the Apache way is is earned authority. This idea that everyone can participate, and your your influence in a project is based on the merit that you earn. Um, and I've found, you know, in academia, the the most productive research labs tend to have a lot of diversity in terms of the uh, the types of of students they're recruiting, the level of those uh, those students in their education. Uh, I've seen many uh, places that have incredibly productive undergraduate students. And all the way up to uh, to PhD students and of course faculty uh, making really uh, meaningful contributions. 
so I think in both cases, it's really valued that uh, that anyone can uh, can have a good idea, and those willing to uh, to participate are generally uh, should be given the opportunity to uh, to do so. But next tenet we'll look at is the idea of a of a community of peers. So this idea that we're all contributing as as individuals uh, in the ASF, and that our different uh, roles and titles are considered equal. Uh, and in academia, this is something that's generally quite uh, important as well. So for me, I know that I work with uh, a lot of folks from uh, from different institutions um, and different uh, places uh, around the world at different levels. Uh, and even when it comes to interacting with uh, with students, especially uh, graduate students, references to to treat uh, graduate students, especially our uh, our PhD students, as as junior colleagues, uh, because that's uh, that's what they are. Uh, now it's uh, it's it's true that in the the context of my relationship with uh, my students in in my day job, there is some uh, level of of authority I have over those students. But at the same time. Uh, it's great to see students who really have great ideas, who are willing to even uh, challenge my own ideas to push things in a in new direction. So I think this is another aspect uh, where both of these uh, communities value this uh, free exchange of uh, of information here. Which brings us to the uh, the next tenet here of open communication. So this idea that any communication in an ASF project should be publicly accessible. All decisions should be uh, should be made publicly. Uh, now, in, in academia, actually, this is uh, not always as uh, as true as I would like it to be, uh, especially in the case of source code that gets uh, published as a uh, uh, that it exists as a byproduct of uh, an academic publication. Uh, unfortunately, often cases uh, source code is is not made public. Uh, but I think we are starting to uh, to see that change. However, certainly uh, publication uh, as an academic is uh, is critical, uh, and in some cases maybe more than uh, than it should be. But this open dissemination of of information is certainly uh, critical to to what we do as as academics. And the next tenet here of consensus decision making. This is certainly something that we to see uh, across academia as well. So, like in the uh, the ASF, seeing votes equal regardless of uh, position. Uh, although, again, in my day job, there certainly are people who uh, who have authority over me. You know, I I do have my my department chair who is my boss. He has he has his boss and uh, and so on. Uh, however, in terms of uh, of governance and and voting, uh, generally faculty members in academia are considered to. Uh, Ideally, have uh, an equal representation when we're trying to uh, to make these decisions and uh, and progress forward as an institution. So I think this is another value that's uh, that's commonly shared between the the ASF and, and academics. Uh, the next uh, tenet here of responsible oversight. So for ASF projects, of course, you know self governing and commits are are peer reviewed. Uh, now this tends to be true to a similar degree in, in academia as well, that uh, different research labs tend to be fairly independent. Uh, I know I've been uh, you know, asked several times by, uh, by family members who are, who are not academics, like, well, so, so who looks at all the, uh, the research that you're doing and uh, who keeps track of where you're going? And the reality is for, for most research labs, we're, we're operating uh, independently, which is also the case with uh, myself and and my students, uh, where the the oversight comes in is uh, the peer review process in in academia when we go towards a publication. So we can think of this as being a bit of a, a mirror for the uh, the peer review process of of commits uh, to Apache projects. Unfortunately, uh, from the code side, it's often not the case where uh, where code written for uh, for academic projects is uh, is peer reviewed. And that's something I'll, I'll likely come back to, uh, but certainly we could uh, we could benefit from uh, from more of that. Uh, another uh, tenet, the ASF, this idea of, of independence. So of course the the ASF, you know, vendoral neutral with with no one having special privileges. I think academics generally value that very much as well. 
Um, although it is certainly true as it you know can be uh, if not intentionally times elsewhere uh, that in some cases there are uh, you know institutions with uh, with larger budgets and clout that that do maybe uh, you know have a, a bit of a bigger say in some cases but I think this is a, a principle that we we generally all value as well um, and finally this uh, this idea of of community over code uh, or in uh, in my case you know community over uh, publications uh, I think is is so important uh, I've seen many labs and many of my my fellow students when I was in in grad school uh, get really hit hard by by burnout from really just uh, trying to uh, to push themselves beyond uh, what's healthy uh, and I think it is it is really important that we take the time to uh, to nurture the communities that we have uh, whether within the ASF it is the uh, the group of of committers and and PMC members, um, or in my case the uh, the students who are who are working with me uh, in my lab, uh, and I think once we have a, a healthy community there, we end up all being much more productive. Okay, so next I wanted to talk a little bit about some success stories that uh, I've seen in terms of the collaboration between academia and, and Apache projects. Uh, now, for those of you, again, who uh, who caught Edmund's uh, keynote this morning, uh, certainly the the work that uh, that he's doing uh, over in Oak Ridge uh, is a great example of some cases where academic researchers can have uh, great partnerships with uh, folks uh, at the, the ASF. Uh, in terms of some specific projects, Okay, here's uh, just uh, you know a few that have kind of uh, not necessarily uh, you know academic research labs in all cases, but uh, but industry research labs as as well, uh, and we see some interesting uh, projects coming out from uh, all sorts of academic institutions. Uh, probably you know the most uh, notable here being uh, Apache Spark, which uh, of course uh, was mentioned uh, in the uh, the keynote this morning. Uh, as being a great example of a, of a project that started in academia, was adopted into the uh, the ASF, uh, and, and has also seen a, a lot of uh, great commercial uh, success as well. Uh, but certainly, you know, projects like uh, like Mesos, uh, Flink, and uh, and others have also uh, seen great success uh, both within the ASF and within industry. Uh, so, for Spark. Uh, of course, Spark started as a, you know, an, an academic project. Some of the uh, papers on on Spark have received thousands of of citations, covering different aspects of of Apache Spark, uh, and has inspired hundreds, uh, if not uh, not thousands, of uh, of other related research papers, either making use of uh, of Apache Spark, trying to uh, improve on on Spark itself, and so on. Uh, now, as far as uh, you know, the Apache Calcite project, uh, we have a bit more uh, modest level of uh, of success on the the academic side. So we we started back in uh, in 2018 with uh, just a paper giving an overview of the uh, the technology within Apache Calcite. Uh, this was an effort that was uh, primarily spearheaded by by Edmund uh, at Oak Ridge. Uh, and we got overall a really great uh, response from the uh, the community. Uh, we actually saw in in looking through how calcite was uh, was being used with in academia and talking to uh, some different folks that there were others besides myself who had uh, had independently discovered calcite and were were making some use of it. Uh, and certainly we've seen that continue to uh, to happen over time. Uh, I think one of the uh, the great things. Uh, for me about uh, about calcite was just having uh, a great foundation of uh, an existing project to build on which for me saved me a lot of time uh, and also gave me the opportunity to uh, to contribute back to this project uh, since then there was a another uh, paper published uh, last year at the the same conference this was also uh, in collaboration with uh, some folks from Apache flink uh, looking at streaming SQL uh, both in in Calcite and Flink, and one really uh, great thing that we've seen in the uh, the Calcite project um, was this uh, this work here on on automated reasoning of of database queries. Uh, 
uh, and this was by uh, Shumo Chu. Uh, he wrote his, uh, his PhD thesis on, on this topic uh, and developed a, a system called, uh, called Causette. So Causette was not uh, primarily focused around calcite, uh, but for a bit of background, what Causette tries to do uh, is to prove uh, equivalence between different uh, SQL queries. Uh, and we found uh, to our delight that uh, the Causette project uh, discovered calcite and they were able to actually formally uh, prove for many of Calcite's uh, rewrite rules for SQL queries that those rewrite rules were correct. So that's really great to see because of course when we when we write tests we try to think of uh, of edge cases we try to cover all uh, possible bugs that we can think of uh, and no matter how well we do uh, with that process that's still uh, a step removed from formally proving correctness. Uh, so this was just uh, really a, a pleasure to uh, to see and some extra validation of the uh, the work that uh, that Calcite folks had been doing. Uh, and a nice side effect of this was that the the test cases that were provided by the Calcite project were also useful to improve Causette. Uh, so it was a mutually beneficial uh, arrangement there, working with the uh, the folks collaborating on Causette. Uh, and we've seen. A number of other pieces of work, in many cases, uh, with no explicit uh, collaboration with the uh, the Calcite community at all, uh, but people discovering the uh, the work we've been doing with uh, with Apache Calcite, uh, and then leveraging that to implement their their own systems, uh, which I think is is just really really great to see that we're able to uh, to build something that's useful uh, not just to uh, to folks in industry but also to those who are really uh, pushing things at the uh, the cutting edge from an academic perspective. Okay, so now here I think is the uh, the really interesting part, which you know hopefully is why some of you uh, you listening are here, uh, which is how to actually get involved with uh, collaboration between academia and, and ASF projects. Um, so first of all, for anyone who uh, who might happen to be uh, an academic or or reformed academic room, uh, just reasons you might want to to choose the Apache Software Foundation to uh, to work with, uh, and I think this can be helpful to to find people who may be interested in problems that you're trying to solve, um, or also to find problems that that may be interesting to people that you have working with you. And, and certainly I've uh, found both in my time collaborating with uh, people on, on ASF projects. Uh, you may also discover some, some interesting technology that may not be, be published yet that could be worth uh, exploring. Uh, and finally, as was the, uh, the case for me, uh, I was able from a practical perspective to, uh, to save a lot of time by, by building on some existing platforms uh, instead of trying to write my, my own systems from scratch. So this is kind of marrying my my own journey in working with ASF projects was just looking for a, for a project that happened to suit my my interest and and some of my expertise, uh, and then actually just getting started writing some code, uh, and in my case that uh, that led to uh, a lot of uh, very fruitful collaboration. So I think that's uh, something that's that's good for anyone who might be interested uh, in this kind of collaboration to explore. Now, from the other side, for, for folks who are, are currently working with the, the ASF um, and wondering why it might actually be interesting to work with, with folks in academia, um, first of all, I think it's a, a good way to get exposure for a project, uh, potentially also uh, some more committers. Uh, so for example, you know, Ed Edmund, after working with us on, uh, on Calcite, uh, now also has the, uh, the commit bit on uh, on calcite it's also uh, really helpful to get a, a different perspective on on problems that you're uh, that you're solving uh, when you're working with uh, with folks in academia versus industry folks um, often people may look at, at problems from a, a different lens and that can be uh, really helpful in trying to move things forward uh, and you might also just happen to find people who are very interested in solving some of the the problems that you're uh, that you're having, and 
might also be able to contribute some new technologies um, or new methods and techniques for, for solving problems that your project is facing uh, that you may not have otherwise been aware of. Uh, so from the, uh, the perspective of, of ASF folks, I think there's, there's a couple different uh, ways that you can end up getting involved with, with folks in academia. So one, if you, if you have a problem, uh, you know, a, a technical problem that you're finding is, uh, is challenging to solve, one approach of, of handling this would be to, to contact some uh, researchers who are working on relevant problems in that area. Uh, and many of us are certainly happy to, uh, to find good problems. Often uh, we have, for various reasons, uh, good students who are looking for, for different problems to, uh, to work on as well. And we're, we're often able to contribute, uh, you know, intelligent person power to, uh, to work on some of these problems. Uh, and there's certainly also other uh, you know, more uh, formal programs there, such as you know, Google Summer of Code, um, other mentorship programs that uh, the ASF has been uh, collaborating with that also can be a, a great fit for, for students. Uh, from the other perspective, you might have uh, a very interesting solution that you've developed as part of uh, one of your projects that you think may be, uh, may be interesting to, uh, to those in academia. Uh, and the first thing to say there is that academic conferences are, are certainly not uh, limited to academics. Uh, I'm sure many are already aware of this, but there are uh, a large number of academic conferences that have an industrial track that's designed for people to present real world work with, with systems and their, uh, their collaboration with industry that, that may have some unique technical elements that could be uh, interesting. To, uh, to academics and you know this could be a good opportunity to potentially find uh, an interesting academic person to uh, to partner with now some of the the challenges finally that that I found uh, in trying to uh, to work with the uh, the ASF is, you know sometimes writing a uh, working code uh, is is a lot harder than writing code ready to uh, to commit uh, and often as you're a, a grad student, it, it can be difficult to, uh, to find time to write uh, really good code. Uh, and I, I think from all of the, uh, the code that, that I've seen in ASF projects that I've, I've worked with, uh, it's generally uh, good code. Uh, and if you have ever seen a code that was written as part of a, a research paper under a deadline, uh, in many cases, unfortunately, you, you probably would not uh, describe that uh, as good code. So that can be a, a bit of a, a challenge to actually set aside the, uh, the time to do that. Um, and often many uh, advisors of students also don't really have the, uh, the time or, or in some cases, you know, the, uh, the deep uh, technical knowledge of the, uh, the systems themselves to actually do uh, appropriate code review. So this is another uh, scenario where we're partnering with with folks at the ASF can be quite helpful. Um, on the flip side, you know, industry folks uh, may find it difficult to find time to uh, to write papers. Often this uh, this might be something that that could be a, a difficult uh, sell to try to get time to uh, work on these things. So this is a, another case where these sorts of partnerships can be helpful. Um, so as as for me, what I'm doing now in this area, I'm still a, a somewhat active uh, member of the uh, of the CalCite uh, PMC, uh, and being fairly early on in my career, I'm I'm fortunate enough that I, I still have the opportunity to write code quite regularly, and I also have uh, several of my students regularly uh, working with uh, with code on uh, on Apache projects, uh, and I think it's been a, a great uh, and useful experience from uh, from both sides there. But uh, that is uh, all I had for you today. So if anyone has uh, has any questions or there's anything that that you'd like to discuss, I'd be uh, happy to answer. So feel free to uh, to type a, a question in the uh, in the chat. Okay. So I, I'm Sharon. I'm here to, to sort of help as well. Um, yeah. So if you so so meanwhile, um, people are thinking about any questions for uh, for Michael. I had a, I had a few actually. So sure. with with the with the amount of sort of open source tools out there, I mean, 
in, in academia, is is there like a, 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 I don't know, an open source tool stack that people automatically go? Because you think about academia and limited right. funding, so open source tools are all the rage. Is that is that true or Absolutely. Not? I, I mean, I think it really depends on the uh, on the domain that you're uh, that you're working in. Um, so so one of the uh, the challenges sometimes um, is is really finding you know a a tool set that is is both useful for the problem domain that that you're working on, uh, but also you know is going to be flexible enough to uh, to really get deep into uh, the internals and mess around with things. Um, mm -hmm. And it really depends on you know the type of research you're doing. So you know if you're more on the uh, the applied side of things, for example. Uh, you're probably going to have a much easier time finding, uh, you know, a useful software stack for uh, for your purposes. Um, so, for example, you know, people working in uh, research on uh, on applied uh, deep learning, you know, are obviously these days have uh, a huge amount of uh, of tools uh, available to them, and and things like uh, like TensorFlow and on, and you know, even from the uh, the Apache side, uh, you know, MLlib from uh, from Spark and and so on. Um, for people who are uh, who are really uh, you know getting deep into the uh, the internals of uh, of some of these systems, it, it can be challenging. So, I'm a I'm a database researcher myself. Mm -hmm. uh, I know you know Postgres is often a, a common target for for people who want to get deep into uh, the guts of uh, of query optimizers it's like that. Uh, Calcite we've also seen fortunately start to uh, to gain some popularity there, mm -hmm. uh, and I and I think that's one reason why it's great to uh, to have these open source projects be made known in Nubia, because uh, I know that uh, that others, even in uh, in my research group as a as a grad student, other students, other faculty, uh, were generally not aware of Calcite. And uh, I'd, I'd heard uh, from from several people at conferences I've been to once we had discussed Calcite a little bit. That it likely would have uh, have saved them uh, a lot of time had they known that the uh, that the project existed. Uh, because you know, it, when, when you have something that you can uh, at least you know start with as a as a foundation that's uh, that's designed to be uh, extensible that you can work with, it, it can certainly save you a lot of time from starting from scratch. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, another question. So you you talked about your your journey in in open source and 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 you know the sort of challenges and things that you faced. Um, I, I, I attended a, a, a session, I think it was on the, on the Tuesday, uh, what, from uh, Daniel Ruggieri, and he, he had yeah. put together some, uh, a, a syllabus for teaching open source, uh, I think just a semester course of, you know, um, it, your, would, would it be, is, is that an option, or do you think that, you know, people need to learn about open source by participating rather than just the theory? I mean, I'm just trying to... See. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I would I would say both. So I, I think uh, it's great for students to have the opportunity to uh, to participate in, in open source projects. Uh, and many students I know uh, here at my institution uh, do so of, of their own accord. Uh, these are often, you know, the uh, the top tier students who many of whom are already uh, fairly skilled coders, uh, even as freshmen. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I think it can be helpful, certainly to actually spend the time educating students uh, on open source on some of the uh, the tools used on on how they can uh, can participate because not all, all students uh, necessarily feel comfortable just uh, just jumping right in even if they they do have most of the skills they would they would need to do so uh, mm -hmm. and over here we uh, it's it's still in, in pretty early stages we have uh, an initiative that's uh, that's starting here called uh, open at RIT that's looking at uh, how we can incorporate uh, open source into different areas of the uh, of the curriculum, whether it's, you know, finding ways for for students to contribute to open source projects, how how we can use open source software, how that that fits into uh, our research agendas as, as well. So mm -hmm. I think there's a there's a lot that can be be done there. And, and I, I think I should probably uh, connect with uh, with Daniel more on that. So I'm glad you, you brought that up. <laughs> oh, I just see a comment here from uh, from Tomek. Um, he says, uh, I think engaging in OSS projects may teach people more than uh, dummy projects that uh, are sometimes done in the universities. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, so I, I absolutely agree with that. And and I'll say, uh, you know, I would love to uh, to see that happen more uh, in my my courses as well. 
you know, I think it, it can be uh, can be challenging depending on the uh, the nature of the course. Uh, in in my case, I'm mostly spending uh, time working with our, our graduate students, so we're often uh, you know working on fairly specific topics and and problems where it can be a, a little bit more challenging to to find you know open source projects that we can uh, connect with uh, in there. Um, I have been trying to you know find ways to uh, to get my students. Uh, contributing to to open source either uh, as as part of their uh, their coursework or some of their uh, their final projects that need uh, and so on. But uh, yeah, it, it can be a challenge. Yeah, I think it, uh, the follow up question is, do you think it can be changed and how? But I think you've pretty much responded to that as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, so so um, one of the things you mentioned as well was around um, oh. Oh yes, yeah, so consider the ALC chapter. Ah, oh, right, okay. Um, so one of the lots of things here, lots of comments. Um, so one of the things that we have, uh, or what what as part of community development, as we're setting up, of is uh, Apache local communities. So where we have um, right. either a group of of Apache enthusiasts together, we can sort of set up meetups and 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 sort of training and things like that to sort of educate people about uh, um, Apache. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure there's one in the U.S. yet, actually. So, um, but we'll we'll see. We'll see. Oh, yeah, I mean, I, I, that, that's certainly you're Canada, right? right? You're in Pardon? Canada, right? You're in Canada, I, right? I, I, I'm no. I'm in. Uh, I'm in Rochester, New York. I was oh, okay, originally in New Canada, okay, but okay. Uh, yes, I just uh, hopped on the other side of the border. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. and I think certainly, you know, one other way that uh, that open source can uh, can fit in, especially, uh, you know, in in larger. Uh, technology colleges, uh, such as as here at RIT, you know, we regularly have sizable uh, student hackathons. Mm. Um, here, our uh, our regular hackathon is called Brick Hack, mm -hmm. uh, and we have you know hundreds of of students typically uh, participating in in these hackathons. And and I think that's certainly a, another case uh, where there can be a lot of integration with uh, with open source there, whether it's you know, trying to uh, to find some uh, some problems that uh, open source projects are are having, and and have a hackathon be focused on on solving some of those, or you know, leveraging some of those uh, technologies as well. Uh, mm -hmm. And the same was certainly true uh, when I was in grad school. Uh, we had uh, the University of Waterloo hosted a Hack the North, which I, I believe is is Canada's largest uh, hackathon drew uh, like several thousand participants there. So that's, mm -hmm. that's certainly, uh, you know, another uh, great venue for that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, sorry, I, 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 I uh, sort of ask you all the questions. So if, if you have any other questions for Michael, then please pop them into the chat. So thank you very much for a great presentation. It's really interesting. Great, thank you. And, and yes, certainly if, uh, if anyone is interested in, uh, in discussing uh, more on this topic, uh, you are are welcome to uh, to reach out to me. Uh, unfortunately, I did not put my uh, my contact info on my uh, on my slides here, uh, but uh, there is uh, is my my name here. Uh, and if you were to uh, to search for me, you will uh, me. It's a it's a rather uncommon last name, so <laughs> uh, I'd love to uh, to chat more if this has interest to anyone. Okay. Right. So, so th this is um, our, our, our final talk on our uh, community track. Um, so we've had three days of really, really interesting talks, lots of subjects, lots of perspectives. Um, and I'd like to thank you. I mean, you, you're here because it's you, you. I'd like to thank you for uh, for, su for submitting something, presenting, and taking the time to uh, to be part of uh, of the community track. Uh, this year at, at, at ApacheCon at home. So uh, super thank you. Um, thank, thanks goes out to everybody that presented in the whole of the track as well. Um, but yeah, it's been it's been really, really good. So thank you very much. Great, thank you. Take care.